so please start getting yourself into that mold there are a number of body secretaries here almost all these people will come day be a secretary or chief secretary or on a ministry please start developing yourself there are many things that you need to do if you think you know everything that's the saddest part i am no more barriers like i mean i don't need to sit any exams or acquire degrees i have come to the last step in my life in the sense a professional life i hope i can live some more years uh, not in this job certainly but <laughs> but in uh, doing something uh, useful maybe uh, training or something like that i've been too long in fact this is my eighth year as a secretary of the president i think it's far too long i hope i can go home as early as possible but i still keep learning i read at least 5 to 10 pages a day not stories but something that can enrich my life and i think that's when uh, vijay spoke about uh, stephen covey's uh, seven habits of highly effective people the seven habits if you really understand i think that gives you a real road map for your life whether it is professional law whether it is private life. so sharpening your skill is what you are doing here and i think that's extremely important now what is lacking today in the public service is someone were to ask me i will be very frank with you i don't have to hide words i don't have to hide meanings i don't have to speak in between i will just say what exactly what i have seen over the years a sense of integrity a sense of honesty i don't see in public service today very unfortunate what do you mean by integrity it has a financial connotation all right but it also has are you are you doing what you are expected to do that is integrity you have your role description you should understand what exactly what you are expected to do and how you are expected to do to what level you can do anything anyway no that's not what it is if you are expected to talk to someone if you are expected to go and speak at a meeting or if you are expected to write something how well will you do that that is the sense of integrity you should have i was just the other day trying to uh, sit down and write the roles that i have to play i was horrified far too many roles but i have to somehow live with it none of it i can say no i can't do it whatever i am asked to do i have to do so i have to keep on expanding myself the ability to conceptualize ability to uh, organize ability to manage you know the classical concept of management is today i think expanding if you started your as they say 101 management the first course in management where you say you plan you organize you lead but there are so many other things that you do today so you need to be looking at uh, whether you are displaying that sense of integrity and these kinds of workshops uh, makes you alive remind you otherwise why are you here for three four days i mean it's a fantastic program i know you will be doing some hands on work not just merely listening to what we say but you will also come up with your own experience now very unfortunately i am again saying this with lot of responsibility i just don't say things because i can say it but i am saying it with great responsibility not many people among you and me the people who work with us are reading today learning today they have stopped learning i have sat at some other very crucial interviews to ask them very simple questions i don't want to even tell you what the questions are so bad answers were horrible simply to tell me that people don't know exactly what is happening around you for a sla officer for a sla fs officer a planning officer for an accountant this is not the case you need to know what is happening around around the globe in your country in the neighboring country in the sub region if you don't know then you cannot do your job with integrity this is what i am coming to all the time i see this professionally now over the last maybe 15 20 years maybe because i've been so involved in this in the armed forces extremely professional they're learning 
you take their general knowledge, they, you talk about general information, things that are happening elsewhere in the world, they are up to it. They are required to do that. I think one, uh, I'm not saying that fighting a terrorist war is good at all, but I think it sharpened all their skills to be alert, to be learning all the time, to be updated all the time. This is what the armed forces are doing today. So let me again take you back to this sharpening the skills. Once again, I see in the public service, the basic stuff is lacking. What is this basic stuff? What are you expected to do? What should you be good at? You should be good at your communication. If you're not a good communicator, if you cannot communicate what you conceptualize here in a way that others will understand, you fail. Secondly, writing. Often I see, I'm not talking about English, forget about it, that's not our language, but that's a global language today, unfortunately. If you are not competent in English, if you are not learning English properly, you won't be able, un be, 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 won't be able to understand what uh, uh, this work workshop is talking about. Because knowledge is created almost all the time in a foreign language, like English, maybe Spanish, maybe French. So our language is English, so we have to learn English at least to communicate properly, clearly, right clearly. I often see, I don't know how Tamil is, but I often see when Sinhala is not being used properly, you see, hundreds of grammatical mistakes that people make. I don't need to tell you what this is, but uh, unfortunately. So a uh, uh, public servant at your level, at the level of an additional secretary, one cannot, one cannot afford to do this. A very basic thing in communication is that if you don't read what you have written, we are bound to make mistakes. I get all sorts of letters from the top level public service and I keep collecting some of these things. Unfortunately, I don't share it with others, but I use them to tell the people they don't care to read but where they have signed. If they read it once, surely they will never send that letter to me. To that extent, they have committed mistakes. Now, but you are also talking about, Mr. Maulana talked about something very interesting. Uh, I had Coincidentally, with that point in my address to you, we don't seem to be believing in teamwork and absolutely poor networking. Networking makes you a very powerful person, a person who is enabled, a person who can think, who will know, because networking also allows you to take a lot of information, not just uh, do things, to acquire Relationship building. I think uh, I'm glad that uh, Vijay raised this whole issue of uh, Covey's, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I strongly recommend that you read it. There's another book that you should read if you can, published in 1995 by Daniel Goldman, Emotional Intelligence. He published two books, Working with Emotional Intelligence. The whole issue of how do you become an emotionally intelligent leader it's all about uh, leadership we are talking about. The paradigms of leadership have expanded so much. If you take hundreds of years ago, what a leader had to do and what a leader has to do today in the context of public service as you, so many things have added on to you. And that's why we are talking about negotiation skills, crisis management. I I negotiation skills have gone to that level of sophistication. If, in fact, very interesting book many years ago that I read, What to Talk, very simple. What to talk and what not to talk. I'm sure the words are important. The wrong word goes out of you because you are a top administrator. That's taken as gospel truth. You can't afford to miss a word, not a single word. This is the whole issue. And that is why I said refining your art of communication is extremely important. Having said all that, you and I are heirs to a great tradition in the public service. What is this? If the public service is not courteous, why should there be a public service? 
it, as up to 1948 when the British were here, and you see some of these governors here, these guys were not uh, Sri Lankans. These guys were all British. Now they came here to administer different people, administering different ethnic groups. But today that is not the case. You and I belong to Sri Lanka. We are all Sri Lankans. So we are administering our own people. So there is no question of uh, you are trying to uh, be a dictator or whatever. You need to be looking at people's needs. And that is why courtesy becomes extremely important. So my dear friends, as you go up the ladder, you have come up to almost, uh, you are almost there. Today you become a minister, secretary, or some of you are running departments, large departments. You have run some of the large departments. Some are running district uh, uh, missionaries, like district secretary. You have a great job. Please ensure that all people who work for you are courteous. There is no way that one cannot be discourteous. If you think, doesn't matter, I can say whatever I want, certainly not. Today the public is being educated very much. You heard what uh, Secretary of Public Administration said. The radio, uh, the television stations, which will interview people. So please make sure that you know you don't bring disrepute to the public service. That's an important thing. And that helps you to be a good communicator and to be courteous if you have the right balance of emotions. And I'm coming to a very important point. You can be tough.